How do lawyers stay goodbye? We'll be suing you. Today, I'm going to recap a 2011 action thriller film called Columbiana. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. Bogota, Colombia A man named Fabio is speaking to Don Lewis, a drug lord and his boss. Fabio tells him he is quitting and handing over all the book, keeping on the cartel to another associate. Don Lewis smiles and says he will miss him, and they toast to Fabio's life. Fabio leaves and Don Lewis motions to Marco, his right-hand man. But Fabio is not stupid. He knows his boss will retaliate at anyone wanting to leave the life of drug smuggling, including him. Fabio takes three guards loyal to him and races home, knowing they have only an hour to leave the country. Fabio gets home and tells his wife Alicia that it's time. He tells his young daughter Catalia to pack, but she says she is already ready. Fabio tells her in case something happened, she should go to the American embassy and give them a microchip. It has all the information on Don Luis's illegal activities. He also gives her an address for his brother. Fabio then gives his daughter his necklace that has the Catalia flower on it. She was named after it because his mother always grew them. Minutes later, Marco and numerous cartel members show up and slaughter Fabio's men. Fabio and Alicia grab guns and try to hold the men off, but are killed off-screen. Catalia sits at the table in shock and listens to the gunfire. She quickly swallows the microchip. Marco and the men come up to Catalia. Marco pretends to be friendly, saying he was a friend of her father, but Fabio took something from Don Lewis, the microchip. Catalia leans in close and grabs a knife placed under the table and stabs him in the hand. Catalia scoops through a window and onto a ledge. Apparently her parents taught her skills to survive, in case something like this happened. She runs off to escape, while Marco's cartel goons give chase. Despite having parker runners, men on motorcycles and in cars, Catalia eludes them by escaping into the sewers. She opens a manhole cover and heads to the U.S. Embassy, where she is sent to an agent who asks about her father. Catalia says he is dead. The man asks if her dad had something, and Catalia quick forces herself to throw up and gives him the microchip. It has the records of all Don Luis's activities. The agent looks at her in shock and asks if she realizes what she had. My passport, Catalia says. In exchange for the chip, they get her out of the country in papers. An American CIA agent is escorting her to Miami. Catalia asks to go to the bathroom and escapes through the window. She gets a bus ticket to Chicago where her father told her to go. She heads for a seedy neighborhood and asks for Emilio. The man Emilio is Fabio's brother and her uncle. When Emilio sees her, he is overcome and hugs her. Catalia is finally able to let go and cries in her uncle's arms. The next day, Emilio takes her to a private prep school and bribes the principal to accept her in the middle of the school year. As they leave, Catalia is mad because she thinks she can learn nothing at school. She needs to learn how to be an assassin. Emilio suddenly pulls out a revolver and shoots at a person driving a car, causing it to crash. He tells her that hired killers are a dime a dozen, he could teach her, and she'd be dead in five years. If she wants to do this and be smart, she needs to go to school. She needs to know how people think. Catalia listens to him. Present day, two cops are sitting in their car, talking about their wives when they are smashed into by a drunk driver. A woman comes out incoherently babbling. They quickly arrest her, and we can see a flower necklace on the woman. It is Catalia all grown up. They take her to the police station. There she is booked on DUI and thrown into a cell for the night. She goes to sleep. U.S. Marshals show up that night with a prisoner. They take him to his cell. Catalia wakes up. Her own DUI was a ruse to get into the police station. The prisoner is the target. She changes her clothes into a skin-tight black suit and picks the lock. She grabs a spoon that was in a cup of coffee at her cell. She swivels the cameras away so she is not seen and grabs some water from the cooler and heads to the electrical room. She rigs the cup and the spoon to cause a spark out and heads into the air ducts. After a few seconds, the water from the cup leaks out enough to shore out the power. Catalia gets through a now stopped fan just before the power is reset. She drops into the men's restroom. The cop guarding the prisoner notices he has no coffee and leaves the room. He goes into the bathroom and is knocked out by Catalia. She drags his body in front of the camera, so the door will be reopened. She opens the cell and hits the prisoner awake. She tells him to undo his shirt. He asks why, and she shoots him several times. 
The marshals hear the gunshots and run to the cell to see the waking up guard with the gun in his hand. Catalia framed him for the killing to buy her time to escape. The marshals still search the entire building, and Catalia goes up to the roof to elude them. When the coast is clear, she heads back through the air ducts, finds her cell, locks the door, and changes back into her clothes. By the time the marshals find her, she is laying back down pretending to sleep again. The marshals have no clue what happened. Catalia is released the next day after being fingerprinted. She leaves the jail and pulls at her hand. She was wearing fake latex skin that replicated another person's prints. Catalia goes home and dances to some music. She gets a shower and washes herself for a long time. Catalia heads to the apartment of Danny, a painter and her quasi-boyfriend. Danny knows little about her and only knows her as Jennifer. Danny and Catalia have sex, and she leaves the next morning without saying goodbye. It is clear she is afraid to show who she really is to him. FBI Special Agent Ross comes to the jail and realizes the victim is the latest of a string of murders they have been tracking for the past four years, 22 in all. They call the perp the Tad Killer due to the markings the killer leaves on the chest. We see it is the Catalia flower. CIA agent Richard travels to New Orleans to a heavily guarded villa. It is the home of Don Lewis who was not persecuted for his crimes. Richard shows him the hit from the jail cells, but Lewis denies he had anything to do with it. Richard tells him that the CIA was very nice with him. He got witness protection and got to continue to run his cocaine smuggling business in exchange for information. But Richard tells him he knows that something is up and Lewis knows what it is. After Richard leaves, Lewis tells Marco to handle the situation. Lewis strongly suspects that Catalia is behind the killings. As he didn't kill Catalia the first time, now you must finish it. Meanwhile, Catalia goes to see Emilio. He shows her the paper with her calling card. He is livid, calling the action stupid. Emilio says he promised his brother to protect her. He never wanted her to go down this road. He is always funneling jobs away in order to protect her. Catalia, defiant, says she chose this path herself and she will not stop until Lewis is dead. Emilio sighs and hands her the next job. A hedge manager created a Ponzi scheme and stole billions and fled the country. People want him dead. Ross is at the FBI office going over security footage. Some of his agents think the killer is Catalia seen on the tape, but he cannot believe a woman would be this type of killer. Catalia goes to her work office, where there are two large dogs who happen to listen to her. She feeds them steaks. Inside Pepe, a friend of Emilio is there. He handles her weapons and cars. Catalia goes into a safe and pulls out her fake passports and finds one for Mexico. Mexico, in the mansion of the hedge manager, who lives in opulence surrounded by stunning women he wouldn't have a chance in hell with if he didn't have billions. One woman mentions the sharks in the aquarium pool are ignoring her but the man tells her one drop of blood and they would become her best friend as they ate her. The hedge fund manager tells his security he wants extra men tonight. Catalia swims through the aquarium, the sharks ignoring her, and pushes up a glass cover to enter the mansion. She pulls out a pistol and silences her. The hedge fund manager gets up and notices Catalia wrote on him thief and the flower design. He walks around his mansion and notices all his guards are dead. He picks up two guns and heads into the pool area seeing a flower. Catalia is sitting in a chair and makes her presence known. He tries to shoot her but his guns are empty. Catalia shoots him in the legs. The man pleads with her to not kill him. He will pay double what she was paid. Catalia shoots him in the chest and he falls into the open pool. The blood flows and his sharks eat him alive in seconds. Back in the USA, Catalia goes to Danny's apartment but he left to see about some galleries. She sleeps on his bed and holds his shirt close. It is clear she cares about him, but she is afraid to show it. Meanwhile, Ross is looking at the Tad Killer calling card when the mailman gives him a vital clue. It is the Catalia flower that only grows in Colombia. Ross tries to tie it to open cases in Colombia, but is denied access due to it falling under CIA jurisdiction. Ross calls Richard and asks for clearance, but Richard dodges the issue. He calls Lewis and tells him to handle the problem before Agent Ross starts to connect the dots. Lewis sends Marco to track Catalia down and interrogate every Colombian until it leads to her family. Danny comes home and Catalia bought dinner. He is happy and Catalia kisses him. Danny stops her and asks to sit, eat dinner, and talk some. Danny and Catalia sleep together again. 
It is now midday. Danny takes a quick photo of Catalie is sleeping. He wakes her up with breakfast food and tells her they can eat it for lunch. Catalia freaks out and says she did too much and she has to leave. Danny is flustered, wondering what the hell he did wrong. Catalia meets with Emilio. He is livid, having seen the paper. Catalia has not stopped with her calling card. People are looking for them, showing that eight people were gunned down in a bar, one being a friend of Emilio. Catalia refuses to quit, but Emilio says it is not just about her. It is about the family she has left. She is putting them in danger. When his son died, he killed many people, but it changed nothing, and he put his family at risk. Emilio leaves her with a picture of her parents, a reminder of what can be lost. Catalia sits and cries. Catalia goes to church with Emilio and her grandmother. She seems to be ready to give up her quest for revenge. Danny is at a coffee shop talking about his girlfriend Jennifer to a buddy saying he is falling for her, but he knows nothing about her. The buddy sees the photo and is shocked on how hot she is. Danny is distracted with his car being ticketed, so his friend takes the phone with the photo and calls his sister-in-law who works at a police station. He asks her to check on Jennifer to make sure she is legit, so Danny won't be hurt. The man has no clue what he has done. Ross is at his computer when it is pinged with Catalia's photo. He traces the signal to the other police station and has the technician arrested as they track the signal further. Ross compares the photo to the security footage at the jail and it's a match. Catalia is the woman whom he is looking for. Catalia goes home and calls Danny, trying to articulate how she feels about him. Danny mentions the photo and she freaks asking who else saw it. He mentions his friend as Catalia checks the perimeter of her apartment. SWAT is there to arrest her. She turns on the shower and climbs into a duct to escape out of her apartment. She runs through several apartments and enters one. The tenant tries to make a fuss so she knocks him out. She recovers a harness and a sniper rifle in the man's bathroom. She previously planted it there. She plants explosives on the wall as Ross and his agents blow the door to her apartment. She uses the harness to slide down the pipes down to the garage. She shoots out the cameras and is able to slide into another air duct before SWAT finds her. She ends up in the subway and she sneaks away. Catalia heads to Emilio's but finds the place ransacked. Pepe is on the floor dead. She finds her grandmother dead in the kitchen, making her break down. She looks for Emilio and finds him tied a chair dead. It was clear he was tortured. Catalia tells him she's sorry and screams in a combination of sadness and anger. Ross comes home and Catalia is there waiting with a gun. She motions for him to sit. She reveals that she has rigged his chair with a pressure-sensitive explosive, so he shouldn't try anything funny. The Catalia flower tag was assigned to call out Don Lewis, but it took till now to get his attention. Now, he took the last part of her. Catalia tells Ross he better get the information about Don Lewis from the CIA or she will kill a family member once a week until he is as hollow as she felt all those years ago. She promises his bomb will be deactivated as soon as she is as gone, which it is. Ross goes to Richard and tells him the situation. Richard will not give up the info. Ross gets a call. It's Catalia who tells him either Richard gives her the address or he will die. Richard scoffed since his windows are reinforced glass. Catalia shoots off a round with her sniper rifle, breaking through the glass. Richard gives him the address. Ross asked about his family but Catalia hangs up, but she had no intention of harming him anyway. Catalia goes to Pepe's garage. She grabs some guns. She sees the two dogs and looks at them. She grabs the armored truck and drives off to Don Lewis's location. At Don Lucy's mansion, Marco is directing the men what they face with Catalia. She is not to be taken lightly. Lewis hears something. It is a rocket that is coming their way. Lewis barely gets out of the way as it blows up the room. Marco pulls him up and they try to get him out of there. Four of the men get into a car in order to start a convoy. Catalia busts through with her truck, crushing the car. She gets out and peppers the car with bullets, killing the men. In the climatic shootout, bit by bit, she kills off Lewis and Marco's men. Marco plays Lewis in a safe room while he tries to kill Catalia. After a few brief shootouts, it is just Marco with one other man. Catalia kills the man, then faces Marco with her gun. They begin to fight hand to hand, alternately disarming each other with Catalia's handgun. Catalia turns to using a towel to try and choke him. After a while, Marco grabs the gun and goes to fire, 
but Catalia ejects the clip and rips the slide off the gun and stabs him the neck, killing him. Louis, realizing all his men are dead but Catalia doesn't know where he is, leaves the panic room and takes one of his vans. He runs into a dead end due to a garbage truck. He receives a call from Marco's cell. It is Catalia. Louis tells her that she will never kill him. She never had him. Louis looks back and sees Catalia two dogs. They tear down Louis apart, making her revenge complete. Danny was taken into custody by Ross and the FBI. Danny knows little and tells them so. Ross says, while he is not under arrest, he still has questions to answer. Danny gets a call from Catalia. She tells him she's okay and they have 40 seconds before they trace the call, so that's enough time to ask three questions. He asks for her real name and she tells him it's Catalia. Danny asks if his little bird will return one day. Catalia tells him that maybe one day she can. An agent tells Ross that Danny is getting a call from Catalia and they rush back in. Danny says, I love you, which makes Catalia tear up. Ross orders him to give over the phone, but Catalia hangs up before he can get anything from her. Ross stares at the phone and tells Danny he's free to go. Catalia puts her sunglasses on and gets on a bus for a destination unknown. If you enjoy this video, don't be shy hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. You should watch the full movie, thank you very much for watching.